Whoa, hello there. Hey, it's the Great Legend Show. I'm the Great Legend. We're coming at you live, it looks like. And let me let you know that this is being filmed right now in glorious, full 1080p high definition. We're going 1920 by 1080p. Progressive, that is. So we're doing great. It's been a long, long time since I've uh, been coming at you live. But what I have in store for you is a comic book video. It's been a long time since we've had one of these cool comic book collecting videos, but I'm coming at you live to tell you a little bit about one. So today, we're going to be going over poly bags, polypropylene comic bags. These are the bags that you'll most of you protect your comics with. So you go to the store, you go to your local mom and pa, comic book shop or you may go to some of the big shops I know here in the Dallas area we got Lone Star Comics um, mycomicshop.com if you want to check them out and order uh, some back issues from them but uh, you know what you'll do is normally you'll go in there and you'll grab like uh, a bunch of bags poly bags and some backing boards and then you know you'll go take your comic books home and um, you know bag them and board them is what they call them so I'm gonna show you a little bit about the poly bags and I've got my comic book box down here just one of my mini comic book boxes I'm gonna show you some current current size polypropylene um, comic bags um, you know they're really thin they're about two uh, mil, uh, mil, mil thick two millimeters thick um, they're really good um, you know to store your comics in. I also have some of these um, backing boards. Um, one side of the backing board is gloss white. That's what you'll put the comic against. One uh, part of the backing board is not. It's not coated or anything so it's uh, not really good right there. This part here is acid free or so they say <laughs> but this side's not. So when you put your comics against the backing board put them on the gloss white side. Now with polypropylene bags like this you only want to keep your comic books in the polypropylene bags or poly bags for five to seven years. Um, I've done them up to ten years. I've actually done them up to more than that and my comic books have been fine but um, as a safety you'll probably want to change these out every seven years. Um, on some of the older comic books um, there's acid in the inks or acid that that comes out of the pages if you will in gases and what sometimes will happen is um, it'll just be really bad for the comic like some of the paints on one piece of paper may go through onto another piece of paper and it kinda goes and goes and goes and goes and then you might if you have an old backing board in there you might even see it against the back of the uh, backing board so we're coming at you live today with um, a comic collecting video uh, explaining uh, poly bags, the importance of bagging your comics, um, and things of that nature. Another um, awesome bag that you can get is called Mylar. Um, I've actually got some Mylar on order from egerber.com. Um, it just hasn't got here yet, but we'll talk about that in a later video. But if you're just uh, new to comic book collecting and starting out, hey, try these poly bags. I mean, they're pretty good. They last you about five to seven years. I would say seven years. Then you want to change them. But if you're a comic book fan like me, you're going to be going through your com comic books a lot anyway. So do that today. We'll be right back. Um, I'm going to show you um, me uh, bagging and, and boarding some comics that I haven't bagged and boarded in a pretty good long while. And then I'll even show you a couple of CGC comics that I got back when I started collecting comics um, when I was about 13 years old. So yeah. We're coming right back. Stay here on the Great Legends Show. We're coming at you live. Right, we're back again, fans. I hope this this light's not too bright for you. Um, I'm going to show you some things about the poly bags here. Okay, so let's go ahead and um, I've got a couple of uh, backing boards right here ready to go. So let's see what we have that we need to bag and board. Okay, I see some. Let's see how many backing boards do I have. I have about four. So we'll bag four comics and I'll show you also an easy way to uh, affix the tape on the back um, that makes things really easy for when you want to open up the backing board. We'll use some of these. 
some uh, Incredible Hulk comics. I'm not sure if you can uh, see these here, but um, let's see if we can zoom in, check out that comic there, and uh, I'll show them to you after I'm done bagging and boarding them. This is Incredible Hulk number uh, 324. This is the Return of the Gray-Skinned Hulk. Because you remember in uh, Hulk number one, he was gray. So we're going to... This one has not been rebagged and boarded in some time. So let's see. We got in here. Got Bruce Banner right there. Got some Hulk going there. Still looks to be white pages. Maybe a tad bit off white. Not really sh mm, Looks pretty good. I mean, maybe maybe a little off white near the tops and bottoms. But definitely not too shabby for a comic that came out in 1986. I got this as a back issue probably in the early 90s. Um, good tight spine. Um, corners are pretty cut sharp. But what we're going to do, we'll go ahead and put that over here got backing board. Remember the gloss side is what you're looking for. It's backing board here. Now what I like to do for, first, um, I'll take the board, make sure there's nothing on it, and I'll lay the comic on the board like so. A little bit um, on the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. Yeah, a little bit of the white on the bottom, right? Take it. Comic. Do this, slide it on in, alright, and then you just drop it on in there. There you go. I like to leave a little bit on the bottom. Man, I cannot see if this is showing or not. Let me raise the camera up a little bit. It's not a good good angle. But anyways, let me, let me uh, readjust my camera real quick. Check how there is, you know, it's not perfectly flat and it's kind of wavy. Poly bags aren't the strongest but they will do the job you know we got a little bit of let's see what this looks like but turn this off see if you could still see no too dark but you know it's kind of wavy right here this is your poly bag right here um let's see okay so what i was talking about is you can do this real quick leave a little bit i don't know if you can see that Leave a, leave a little bit of that white backing board on the bottom and just kind of like center it up a little bit about right there. There we go. See, like that. Okay, I'm going to show you how I tape this. Flip it over. Um, tape I use is your normal scotch tape. Now, for me, some people will um, usually has this one, one and an inch flap, little flap, one and a half inch, fold it over. Um, some people use two pieces of tape. Um, I prefer to use one, just right across the middle. I get about maybe an inch and a half of, of tape, about right there. And what I like to do is I, fold, I, I put the tape at an angle, usually about a 45 degree angle, I think, just diagonal, right in the middle, like that. See? Nice bag and boarded. To remove, look how easy it is. Put it on the side, lift up a little bit of the flap, right across. You just run your finger right across, comes undone. Let's try it again. See? Put your finger underneath the flap, right across. Now, you can do a couple things now when you take the comic off. You want to be real careful when you take the comic out. You can actually bring it to the front. Flip it and reverse it like that so it holds. See? See that? You just kind of flip the flap, roll it, and stick it. That way you can pull the. I usually pull by the board, the board and the, the comic. Pull the board and the comic out because it slides out easier instead of you running the risk of bending your comic. You'll always have it against the backing board. So. That's pretty much it to uh, bagging with poly bags. I'll come right back and I'll have some other Incredible Hulks to show you all bagged and boarded. Then we're going to see, I'm going to show you two CGC comics that I got uh, in the early 90s. And I never even rebagged and bored them. And I, um, 
sent them into the CGC last summer around June 2011. I think I got them back about, I sent them in end of May, but I got them back in July 2011. So that was early, we'll see what the dates were, some, somewhere in the early 90s, mid 90s. And then, uh, yeah, got them back and they got pretty good grades. So uh, we'll be right back and also um, stay tuned. I've got an unboxing. I got a couple of comics in the mail, a couple of comic boxes in the mail. So we'll see what happens here on The Great Legend Show. We'll be right back. Okay, so I got all these bagged and boarded. Incredible Hulk 3, uh, 24, where, which is the second uh, appearance of the gray-skinned Hulk. You know, whenever this, uh, back in the day, I really liked the gray Hulk because he was Joe Fixit. A little smarter, see I angled the tape there. Let's see if I can do this with one hand. Come on, baby. Well, I don't know if I can do it with one hand. I've got these bags slipping around. But anyway, so yep. Yeah, that's what you do. You just angle the tape. And you know, if you like doing um two pieces of tape on your comics, you can put an angle one here and an angle one here. If you're uh, so I'm um doing this from left to right. Um, I also usually use my right hand to open it up. Uh, um, but if you're left hand, you know, just reverse the tape. And then that way you, you could just use your left hand and, and it, you know, move left or no, right to left and then left to right is how I do it. Anyways, so angle your stuff up. So we got that Incredible Hulk right there. Lay that over there. We have, I liked this comic. This comic itself is a little bit, um, miscut on the cover it's probably miss it's not miscut but they cut it you know it's it's perfectly rectangle but they got a little bit of the top off that happens in comics uh 350 this was a continuation from uh, one of the fantastic four issues uh, you know a crossover where the thing the new the new thing right there fights the gray hulk but also what happens is the green hulk fights in this as well so it's the green and gray hulk versus the thing and of course Doctor Doom there has something to do with it. So that's Curtis Hulk 350. Both of those comics are uh, 75 cents. By the way, I want to uh, send a special shout out uh, right now to a good buddy of mine here on YouTube, Thomas Parks 8484. The guy is pretty awesome, pretty cool guy. He uh, does um, he collects movies, he collects um, comic books, um, he, he reviews movies. Let me tell you a little else about this guy. He, if you know, um, the, the best point guard who's ever played, probably the best little point guard who's ever played in the NBA, number, number three of the old 19 or the 76ers, AI, Allen Iverson, this guy, Thomas Parks, 8484. I'm going to post a little link, um, right now in an annotation for you to go check his videos out. He looks just like Alan Iverson. So be sure to check out Thomas Parks, 8484. Give him a boy a little shout out there. Really cool guy. This is Incredible Hulk 372. This is when um, Bruce Banner and the Gray Hulk cannot contain the beast from within the Green Hulk. So, you know, Banner back in these issues in the 370s was having a hard time with uh, the Hulk. And then this is 373. And all of these are leading up to the number 377, which I have. I'm not going to pull it out right now, but uh, where the Hulk becomes the new Hulk. And what it is is it's Bruce Banner, the Gray Hulk, and the uh, Green Hulk all put into one humongous, awesome Green Hulk. But there's the Gray Hulk again, Incredible Hulk 373, all rebagged and boarded in new polypropylene polyconic bags. All right. Now... I want to show you some CGC comics. These are, I've showed you these in previous videos. This is um, Spawn number one, Todd McFarlane's story. Um, it's in the little bag. Let's get it out of this bag here. There we go. Let's take it out of there. See that shine? Spawn number one. This is also Thomas Parks, 8484, one of his favorite heroes hell isn't it everyone's this is probably todd mcfarland's best hero of course todd mcfarland was drawing uh, spider-man for marvel also but and you know he's done very many things but spawn right there known for uh you know one of the the african-american he was an african-american guy of course turned into spawn so it's 
Always good to have some old brothers. You know, Al Simmons. First appearance of Al Simmons, a.k.a. Spawn. So, yeah, man. Awesome book. And look at this. It's a 9.4. I bought this. I didn't buy it. You know, I sent this into CDC last summer. and got it back at 9.4, which is near mint um, on that CGC scale. So, you know, even, and I didn't change the poly bag since I'd gotten this book, which was, and I bought it off the rack in 92 from a place called Ken and Tanya's Comics. And they're far gone. It was a Ma and Pa store. Um, so, yeah, May of 92, spawn number one. Dollar ninety five, two thirty five for you Canadians. <laughs> All right, let's look at another CGC one that I bought in April of ninety two, and I was doing. I had a Spider Man three sixty, three fifty eight, three fifty nine. I had a, a bunch of the Spider Mans, and little did I know, in one of the issues there was this crazy guy named Cletus Casty, and I just kept collecting these, bought them every month. This is the first full appearance of Carnage, because, you know, a couple issues back, I think it was 359, Cletus Cassidy was in there, but he was only on, like, one or, one or two pages, and he was uh, laughing and giggling. He was kind of a, looked similar to the Joker, in the, but he had red hair, and he didn't have the paint on, but this is Carnage's uh, first uh, full appearance. Sent that off, also got a 9.4 near mint. I mean, the only thing that I had wrong with this was a little upper spine crease, spine wear. And that was about it. I mean, corners look fairly well. A little rounded right there, but cut. I mean, everything's clean. No chippage, no nothing. You know, the corners are just a tad bit. I don't know. They're pretty, pretty good. So, 9.4 of this. So, uh, the importance, what I'm trying to get as people... Bag up your comics, and uh, you'll be a happy person. All right, we're going to be right back, and I'm going to show you an unboxing. This is just an added bonus. But uh, as far as the poly bag um, comic book collecting portion, that, that part of the video is over. So we'll come right back with an unboxing. Look at this. You get a comic in the mail. It's in one of these flat rate um, deals here. Bent, up, bent corner. Look at that. Just totally bent corner right there. What the hell are these? What the hell are these scissors here? You God, these people! Come on, people! Okay, look at this. Look, look. Okay, check this out. This is pretty good. Pretty good packaging. Maybe I was wasn't too too generous to that first guy. Look at that. It's folded up between a bunch of flat rate boxes of some sort. Okay, I got it unrolled here. All right, hey, 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 check this out. Brand new, already, I'm gonna rebag this, but Pi Pi number three, Pi Pi number three, variant cover with olive oil on the cover. See that? Popeye number three, variant cover, olive oil on the cover. I also want to um, tell you about this. Look, look at this. This is this is not too shabby. Check it out. This isn't too shabby. Look. Put 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 one comic, fold it up between a lot of those, and tape it around. Not too shabby. You learn something every day when you order from different people. But these Popeye comics, these came out I think in 2012, and I got to give it up to my boy Thomas Parks. He uh, has the first one of the issue. I've actually got one on order um, from watching his videos. So, got to give a lot of love there for Thomas Parks 8484. Um, they didn't they didn't tape theirs very good though. See, you can't just run your finger and pop it open. You have to be real careful and all that. So I'm gonna rebag and board that one. All right. So we got another package. This is your kind of kind of packaging I'm looking for. So let me open this one up. Got a little bit of tape here. You know, the tape's not too not too tough to get through. Just kind of be real careful cutting it open with these scissors. Okay, we'll cut a little in the front here. Okay, 
Okay, not too shabby. A lot easier to open than old Popeye over there. Open it up. Look at that. Now this is the proper way to pack comics when you're sending them to the CGC. You uh, put the comics, I don't even know if you're going to be able to see this, but you put the comics in a larger, um, larger cardboard like this, you know, thicker pieces of cardboard, a little um, larger than the backing boards. Let's see what we've got here. Okay. Let's see here. Awesome. Look at this. And it's even taped. Look at that. This is a Shazam right there. Shazam in the house. This is Shazam, the Monster Society of Evil. It's an all new Shazam adventure written by Jeff Smith, the creator of Bone. You may know Bone. Let me cut a little more because this is taped really good. Right there. And let's see, I've got one of four and they're bagged in a bigger bag as well. And with these, I can keep these pieces of cardboard for when I mail some comics. So these are actually going to be even sturdier because these are thicker. These are actually, I think, mini... Uh, skinny skinny trade paperbacks so these are actually like more durable look at that I got Shazam the Monster Society of Evil 1 got two right there I've been wanting to read this for a while number two Put these right here Shazam Monster Society of Evil 3. Little Billy Batson up in there. And Shazam Monster Society of Evil number 4. So very cool right there. I've been really wanting to read this. Um, I like this. You know, they have Shazam in the new 52, but I don't like his, his new look. Um, but since you know I found out about this one, I've been really wanting to read this. These are in um, great condition, unread, and it looks like they've never been read. It looks like they've just been immediately bagged and boarded. So very good. These are these are even these are sturdier than than your normal comic books because they're uh, you know they're thicker. So I'm really excited to read the Shazam Monster Society of Evil and. Um, my dad actually, you know, he grew up, you know, he born in 44. A lot of the kids back then show, you know, preferred uh, Shazam over Superman because Billy Batson was a kid. So a lot of the stories had that kind of kid humor because, you know, whenever he said Shazam, boom, he turned into Captain Marvel. So a lot of kids identified with that character, Billy Batson, more so than the adult Clark Kent, you know. And the... Uh, uh, some other golden age heroes, Captain America, you know, kind of more violent because he was fighting those Nazis. And another golden age hero you all know and love is old Batman, you know, the greatest uh, detective, world's Anyways, greatest uh, detective. So these are my new my new comics. I got some Shazam, Monster Society of Evil, and I got that Pie Pie number three variant cover with olive oil on there. So uh, thanks for watching, um, and I hope you learned a little bit about poly bags and the importance of uh, bagging and boarding your comics. Here on The Great Legend Show, we're your home for your comic book collecting needs. Hey, peace out. God bless.